All right, so getting right into it, I pulled out the old board. I've got all the pigtails still dangling here, uh, which is fine because I've got, not only do I have the original board, and the original board's got most of the stuff labeled, but I also have the wiring schematics, like I said in my other video. So this should be pretty painless. All of these connectors are screw on with uh, crimp terminals. I've got crimp terminals on order. So my step and direction wiring will match with the little crimp terminals. And if you notice here, I got this little guy, which is a 16 pin breakout board that attaches perfectly to the ribbon cable, locks in place, it has a DIN rail mount, it was 12 bucks or 14 bucks on Amazon, not bad. So that's going to clean up the wiring. I thought I was going to have to cut this ribbon cable and then I came across this thing and I'm like, hell yeah. So the 7i76 is going to go right here next to it. I got the DIN rail kit for that as well, the three piece kit. Um, that's pretty much where I'm at so far, but quite frankly, if I get the step and direction going and hooked up to the 7i76, as long as I've got the computer going, I mean, I could, you know, preliminarily I can move this thing around, which is kind of exciting already. I've got this, uh, this computer, my router control I actually dual boot to Windows and I've got an old wireless access point attached to it so anytime I need to get on the internet I can just plug that thing in I actually use that for my uh, live sound rig for when um, when I have to mix live shows with my band so I got the Debian 10 with the uh, 2.8 software version burning onto USB stick via good old Rufus here. And I've got the computer upstairs that I actually got from, uh, I, I have another house that I'm working on and I, there were a bunch of computers there and one of them looked like it was a newer model and newer being, you know, eight or nine or 10 or 11 years old. Still fairly new to me. Um, dual core computer that had a burnt power supply. Ordered a uh, power supply for 30 bucks and I uh, got that up and going and that is what I'm going to install Linux CNC onto and then do the latency test to see how bad that thing is. Chances are, and I learned this with the U700, chances are that it's a it's going to be a graphic thing. So if the if the onboard graphics are too processor heavy, then that'll cause the latency to spike through the roof. And so we'll see uh, if that has any part in it. Because when you load up GLX gears and you grab the corner of the window and you just drag it real like real fast, you'll see the gears kind of lag to uh, catch up. And that's kind of a telltale sign that your latency numbers are going to spike through the roof. I learned that with the uh, the other, with the mini PC that I bought and subsequently returned. So if that does turn out to be the, the case, I can get a, uh, I can get a cheap uh, PCIe graphics card and be done with it. So that's, uh, that's all for now, but I'm going to uh, piece this video together, so I'll see you in the next clip. If you uh, haven't ever listened to it before, uh, I, I, I suggest listening to uh, No Presents for Christmas from... I always get it confused if it's King Diamond or Merciful Fate. It's the same dude. But uh, check that song out. And in the meantime, check these out. I got the 7i7-6 boards, and I got the DIN rail mounting adapters. And at first I was like, why are they 12 bucks? 
for a couple of pieces of plastic. But when you get them and you look at them, you kind of realize why. They put a lot of time into making these things. These, these, these rails, top and bottom, are machined flat. So they're, they're nice and clean, flat, beautiful. So, yeah, justifiable for the, uh, for the cost. Going to pull out one of these. I got two of them in there. I haven't taken them out of the bubble wrap yet. I got one for me and one for my school. And we're going to mount that up into there and i should have uh my wires getting delivered at some point between now and 4 30 so i uh i should have this thing wired up later on so we will see the mesa runs on a direct 24 volt power supply and i'm pretty sure that they're that, that this will work fine for what I need. I just have to make sure that the 24 volt going out of it is not switched. Because the uh, Mesa recommends, or they say big no-no, they recommend direct from 24 volt supply to their board. No switch in between. I gotta trace back the wires for all this stuff here. I gotta get this thing out. I gotta, I gotta get a new one. But I gotta find out how these are all interconnected i think i think i think the way that this works is black wires come out and go to here 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 and then the blue wires go to the vfd i presume or at least one of the blue wires two of the blue wires i don't know I got to crack open the schematic before I put power to this thing once I get the board mounted just to make sure that I'm not switching 24 volts going into the Mesa. So we will see. I'll spare you the boring details of putting screws into a PCB. Um, I did drop one of the washers that they supplied. Luckily, I'm fat, so it bounced off of my belly and landed inside the electrical cabinet. So, went in without a hitch, snap right in place. The um, Ethernet port is in kind of. It's out of the way. It's kind of in a lousy spot here, but. Otherwise, not bad. Um, I think I, I, I've decided that I'm going to attempt a Raspberry Pi. So this is just the old this is just the old drive board here. So at the Pi, I've got all this empty rail space down here. You can see where I was fishing through the dust to get my washer back. I've got all this empty space here so i can get a get the pie get a din rail mount for the pie put it right there and then from there run the hdmi cable to a bulkhead connector that goes onto this board here or onto this plate so i'll have the bulkhead connector for the hdmi bulkhead connector for usb for the interface to touchscreen monitor and we'll be in good shape there um may or may not have space on here for everything because i need ethernet hdmi and usb so i could just put one or two of them here hard mount no big deal So these guys must have crates and crates and crates of these button head cap screws because this entire machine was basically put together with those and some Phillips head screws or probably posi driver or something. Took the turret 
encoder cover off just to see what that was about. So you got the little encoder wheel, sensor, send signal back to main control board. So that will tie into one of the Linux components for the encoder monitoring for Mr. Turret to rotate. It's funny because this thing looks so much bigger in the videos and the pictures. I mean, here's here's my hand. It's tiny. I found, uh, I found where the homing switches are at. So there's a homing switch underneath here. And there's a Z-limit switch here, which I'm assuming is also just the home switch. So it'll be single home switch, soft limit in the... Uh, positive Z and the negative X. I'll just have soft limits for that. So if I lose steps, I can mush something. I'm, I'm trying to mush it as little as possible. It's not the most, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a nice looking little machine, but it's not the, you know, the biggest, most stout thing in the world. So it looks like it spent a little bit of time cutting some metal, but a lot of, a lot of wood dust in here too. But there's the Z limit switch. The limit switches are actually wired in normally closed. So if there's a break in the if there's a break in the switch, if the switch goes bad, it'll prevent the machine from trying to eat itself when you home it out, which is cool. The um one of the machines I'm working on at the school, their limit switches are wired normally open. So all bets are off if the limit switch takes a dump on you and that's what one of them did on me uh, when I first got it powered up. Tried to home it out, and when that thing hit the uh, hit that limit switch, boy, oh boy, it sure didn't know it. <laughs> but got that all back together. So yeah, I just just chugging along here. I mean, I have a, a good understanding of what all these are doing because the because uh, the breakout board was labeled, and I've got my got my laptop on top of the machine. With the with the electrical diagrams opened, trying to trace back the main connector switch, just to make sure that there's no switching of the 24 volt. Once the incoming power goes in and the switch is turned on, it looks like, like I said, it looks like it goes into the transformer. And then directly out, which will be good for my needs. This cable here is the 5 volt supply that goes to the, this board to let it know that it's time to wake up and be happy. So that gets tied into some 5 volt enable signals on the 7i76 there was a 24 volt header on the other board which i'm assuming is just going to go to here i'm not sure if that was a 24 volt into the breakout board or 24 volt out of the breakout board i'm going to uh keep looking at the diagrams and see what each of these actually ties to in the schematics so last video until I get my crimper tool, cut my step and direction wires for both of my axes. Pulled out the step and direction plugs one and two to get or zero and one really to get those ready for hooking up to the breakout board. I uh Threw a zip tie around the ribbon cable to kind of clean it up a little bit. And then, just in case anybody's ever doing a wiring project, if you've never done it uh, before, get yourself in the habit of poking a hole into the box that the stuff comes in, and you just grab and pull your wire out. 